Good afternoon, baseball fans, and welcome to Car Shield Collegiate League TV. I'm Shane Holsey alongside Cam Thomas. Charlie Bornoff on the production this afternoon. We got some afternoon baseball for you. The first of three games today, the Corn Belters and Gems get things started as the Gems take the field. They'll be the home team at 8, 12, and 1. Corn Belters 11, 8, and 2. Read you through their starting lineup. Here this afternoon, the first place Corn Belters lineup goes like this. DJ Schmidt leads things off in left field. Tate Matheny's in center field. He hits second. Jake Berger, the third baseman, hits third. Nate Green, the catcher, hits fourth. Brett Pearson, the second baseman, hits fifth. Drew Mize, the shortstop, hits sixth. His brother, Carter Mize, hits right behind him. He plays first base. Will Menendez is a designated hitter. And Brandon Ole in the right fielder rounds out the order. And they will be squaring off against the right-hander from Missouri Baptist, Josh Stieglitz will be making his sixth start, seventh appearance. 25 strikeouts, nine walks, 20 hits surrendered, eight earned runs given up in those 21 innings. ERA just under three at 2.67. Cam, absolutely gorgeous day for baseball. Back-to-back -back days. Temperatures in the low to mid-70s this afternoon should be a fantastic day of baseball and all six teams in action today. Absolutely. You know, the entire league is out here today. And, um, you know, just – an opportunity, you know, for especially the Corn Belters lineup, who is they've had a really good week uh, for them to continue what they've been doing. Um, of course, the table setters at the top of that lineup and Tate Matheny and Jake Berger, guys that can fly the ball all over the field. So look to see their lineup spark things early and often for the gyms. You know, it's been a rough couple of days for the gyms. Um, this is their third straight day in a row playing. You see some adjustments in the lineup, such as, you know, some different guys at different positions. You've got... Um, and even addition to the roster today for the gyms. So uh, it's it's pretty interesting just to see uh, how we just go day after day and just approach everything day by day, and I'm sure that's how the players are thinking of it as well. The Corn Belters were last in action on Monday. They picked up an 8-7 victory over the Cavemen in walk-off fashion and a walk-off base hit for Tate Matheny and extra innings in that ball game. The gyms were handed a 6-4 loss at the hands of the Hoots yesterday afternoon. So DJ Schmidt. Gets things started. Schmidt, Matheny, and Berger to lead things off against the right-hander, Josh Sieglitz. And at 12.04 Central Time, the first pitch from Josh Sieglitz is in there for a strike. No balls, one strike. You're going to see a lot of that from Sieglitz. First pitch strikes. He's fifth in the league in first pitch strike percentage at 62%. Getting ahead of hitters almost two-thirds of the time. And D.J. Schmidt lines a base hit right back up the middle. That's how things get started. A base hit right back up the box for D.J. Schmidt. Good piece of hitting right there from D.J. Schmidt. And if he can continue to get on base, of course, we talked about it right before we got on air. Um, Tate Matheny and Jake Berger, two guys at the top of this order, they are run-driving guys. They, they barrel up the baseball. I like D.J. Schmidt at the top of this lineup. He's really a grinder at the plate, always puts together a good at bat, high batting average, a high on base percentage. Perfect guy to hit in front of the this 2-3 in Matheny and Berger. So now Tate Matheny, who delivered a walk-off base hit on Monday and hit a couple of home runs in that ball game as well. He looks at a ball high, one ball, no strikes. D.J. Schmidt, the Fort Zumwalt North graduate and Missouri Baptist Outfielder greets his Missouri Baptist teammate with a base hit to get things started. Swing and a miss by Matheny. One ball, one strike. Tate Matheny, seven home runs. That leads the league. 18 runs driven in, scored. A 317 average coming into play. OPS at almost 1,100. This is his 18th ball game. He looks at a called strike. Good fastball in the outside corner from Sieglitz. Matheny, three doubles, seven homers. More than half of his hits going for extra bases. Former Missouri, or Missouri State Bear and current Pawtucket Red Sox. The one-two is inside, gets away from Braden Spar, but not far enough for Schmidt to advance to second base. Two balls, two strikes, take around the horn. For the gym, start with the outfielders. Ryan Malzahn is in left. Lorenzo DeBrecht, the new gym, is in center field. Kylan Cunningham is in right field. Kyle Franklin is at third. Lane Barrymore at short. Tate Wargo at second. Nick Wilkie at first. And Braden Spar behind the plate catching Sieglitz. The 2-2. Outside gets away from Spar again. And Schmidt will head over to second. 
So the ball gets all the way to the backstop, and Schmidt is now in scoring position for Tate Matheny. And the count runs full at three and two. The last two pitches have got away from Spar. He'll go have a word with his right-hander. Siegel's got ahead of Matheny. One ball, two strikes, and the last two pitches have missed. Temperature right at 75 degrees at game time. Absolutely perfect day for baseball. The 3-2. Skied a mile high and a mile fouled on the left field line. Ball might have gone out of the stadium down the left field line. He was so far out in front of that pitch. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming here to Matheny. The leading home run man in the Car Shield Collegiate League. Another 3-2 coming from Sieglitz, and it hit him. Off speed pitch just got away from Sieglitz, and you can tell didn't have much spin on it and, and just wrong location, plunks him right between the numbers. So now a couple runners on base and a dangerous man here to face in that situation. Another former Missouri State Bear and first round draft pick of the Chicago White Sox, Jake Berger. And with Joey Hawkins, the manager for the Corn Belters, getting called up to the alternate training site for the Cardinals, Jake's dad, Mike, serving as the head coach for the Corn Belters for the rest of the season. And that's chopped out the short double play ball, six, four, and three. Barrymore to Wargo to Wilkie for two outs. Yeah, good job by Sieglitz just settling down right there. You know, realizes that he has runners on first and second and that this can turn into a big inning. Makes a pitch, allows Berger to put the ball in play and let your defense play behind you. Sometimes when you don't have it on the hill, you're struggling to find it, just allow a batter to put the ball in play. That's exactly what he did there. Now he's one out away from getting out of the inning after surrendering a couple base runners to start the ball game. And he's not going to as Nate Green lines a base hit up the middle. And that drives in the first run of the game for the Corn Belters. It's one nothing. Schmidt comes across to score. I you know we've talked about this the last couple of days about how a lot of these hitters are being patient at the plate, but 90% of the time, you're going to get first pitch fastball. And good recognition right there by Green, realizing that Seagulls is struggling and that he identified that fastball, drove it right back up the box to score the first run of the ball game. Nice approach there by Green. He picks up an RBI. That's RBI number two for him here in his fifth game in the Car Shield Collegiate League during the catching duties this afternoon. He will catch Nathan Beaton in the bottom half of the first, but the Corn Belters here in the first looking for more. Now, Brett Pearson at the plate, runner on first base, two away. And he hits that one sharply to second. Tate Wargo on a hop, nice play over to first. The Corn Belters get a run, RBI base hit for Nate Green. We head to the bottom of the first inning, one nothing Corn Belters. You're watching Car Shield Collegiate League Baseball on CCL TV.
to the bottom of the first we go. one nothing. Corn Belters lead. RBI base set for Nate Green. Has the Corn Belters on top as we head to the bottom of the first. Jim's coming to bat. We'll read you through their lineup. Tommy Woods, a designated hitter, leads things off. Then Tate Wargo, followed by Ryan Malzahn, Kylan Cunningham, Braden Spar, Lorenzo DeBrecht, Lane Barrymore, Kyle Franklin, and Nick Wilkie. And they will face the Maryville Comet and former St. John Vianney product, Nathan Beaton. Making his second start, third appearance. He's tossed five and two thirds of one run of shutout ball, just giving up one hit, eight strikeouts, and three walks. Four shutout innings against the Gems last Monday, and he faces Tommy Woods to lead things off with a ball, one ball, no strikes. Beaten out a guy who's going to throw exceptionally hard in the low 80s. Very good command. There's a good pitch there on the outside corner. One ball, one strike. Going to work the ball down in the zone. A lot of ground balls off this right-hander. Formerly of the Adidas A's. The St. John Vianney Griffins. That's fouled out of play. One ball, two strikes to Tommy Woods. Would struggle at the plate the last couple days, except yesterday I did pick up a double, but other than that, the last couple ball games, Woods trying to get his form back, and there's a foul ball off the knob of the bat. One ball, two strikes. Woods, very patient eye at the plate. Gets on base about 50% of the time so far this summer. He leads things off. He's a designated hitter this afternoon. He looks at a called third strike on a front door breaking ball from Beaton for strike three and out number one. Yeah, it's a tough pitch to take with two strikes for Tommy, but identified it, thought it was off the plate, and sometimes that's just the luck of the draw, but he's got to be able to build off of the success that he had yesterday. Of course, a walk and a base hit for him after a day of three straight strikeouts on Monday. So Beaton retires Woods for the first out and now faces Tate Wargo and fires in a strike. The Akron Zip hitting second in this lineup between Tommy Woods and Ryan Malzahn, and these three have found a home at the top of this gym's order. There's a breaking ball that misses down from Nathan Beaton. It's kind of interesting that Coach Paulson for the gyms has kind of decided to go with that table setter approach in the two spot. You see a lot of different coaches have now kind of shifted to using the two hole as a power spot, but he keeps it as a table setter. Tate Wargo fouls that one out of play. One ball, two strikes as he sprays it foul down the right field line. Which is kind of important when you think about it because it essentially gives you back-to-back -back leadoff hitters instead of, you know, a guy that may have a high strikeout rate because he is a big power guy. So good utilization of the top of the lineup for Justin Paulson and the gyms. The one, two to Wargo is hit to the second baseman, Brett Pearson, and he'll fire on the first. Two up, two down for Beaton here in the first. Take you around the horn for the Corn Belters. DJ Schmidt in left, Tate Matheny in center, Brendan Olian in right, Jake Berger at third, Drew Mize at short, Brett Pearson at second, Drew's older brother Carter at first base, and Nate Green behind the plate, catching Nathan Beaton. Two away for the left fielder, Ryan Malzahn. Malzahn, a 317 hitter coming into play, getting on base almost 42% of the time. OPS just under 1,000. Playing his 15th game, couple of home runs. Nine runs driven in, seven runs scored, and four doubles. The one ball, no strike pitch on the outside corner. Miles on. Commit to Southeast Missouri State facing the Maryville commit, Nathan Beaton. Check swing and a ball outside, two balls, one strike. We've seen the power out of Malzahn this summer, but I think something that goes unnoticed is his plate discipline. Great job there by identifying the off-speed pitch and spitting on it. Three balls, one strike. That pitch misses down and away. Malzahn has walked six times and 48 plate appearances. Been hit by a pitch, struck out 11 times. 13 hits and 41 at-bats. 
The 3-1 is outside, and he works a two-out walk. Beaton just pulled that pitch across his body, and he'll surrender a two-out free pass. His fourth walk and six innings and change this summer. And that brings in the right fielder, Kylan Cunningham, now with two away, runner on first. First base runner for the Gems, and Cunningham first put swing, fouls it back. I like the aggressiveness from Kylan Cunningham again. Another guy in this Gems lineup who is not afraid to attack first pitch fastballs, and especially with two outs, a guy who uses a lot of speed, you understand what you're going to get on a first pitch. Now you've got to adjust. He calls time, and I think he got something in his eye, maybe a bug or Something got in his eye there, so he'll step out and reset. No balls, one strike. 250 hitter coming into play. Slugging just under 400. A couple of home runs. That's down and away. One ball, one strike. Two out walk to Ryan Malzahn. He's on first base. Beaton got a strike out of Tommy Woods, a ground ball off the bat of Tate Wargo. Now one ball, one strike count to Kylan Cunningham. That sprayed foul and out of play. One ball, two strikes. Nathan Beaton trying to retire Cunningham. Cunningham trying to extend the inning to the catcher, Braden Spar. And the right hander delivers the one two. Swing and a miss. Got him with the high cheddar. Two strikeouts in the inning for Beaton. He works a scoreless first, one nothing Corn Belters. As we head to the second inning here on Carshield Collegiate League TV. I want to take this time to thank our proud sponsor, Interco Recycling. Interco has been recycling non-ferrous industrial metals, batteries, computers, and electronics since 1996. Their 400,000 square foot, 45-acre facility is located on the Illinois side of downtown St. Louis. So if your company has large amounts of scrap metals, batteries, or electronics in need of recycling, give Interco a call, 1-877-258-3601, or head to itcscrap.com. That's 1-877-258-3601. Zero one or itcscrap.com. Interco Recycling, a metal tracks recycler since 1996. One Missouri Baptist arm gives way to another, and Matthew Hess on the first pitch. Drew Mize chops it out the second. Nice play by Tate Wargo for the first out. So Matthew Hess gets an out on just one pitch. What a play out there by the Akron Zip, Tate Wargo. Yeah, that was a great play by Wargo going to his left. Momentum's taking him towards the second base bag. Still able to make a little three-quarter arm slot throw over to first base in time to get the speedy runner. So one away, and one Mize brother gives off to another, Drew Mize. Facing his Missouri Baptist teammate, Matthew Hess. 
Final line for Seaglitz, one inning pitched, one run. It was earned. Two hits, no Ks, no walks, and one hit by pitch. So Seaglitz just works one inning, gives way to Hess, the six-seven right-hander from Scottsdale, Arizona. Originally of Scottsdale Community College, now at Missouri Baptist. Was a junior there this spring. 22 in the third innings there. 26 strikeouts, just six walks. Nine earned runs and 22 hits given up in those 22 and a third. Had a 10 strikeout performance against William Woods back on February 28th. He worked six innings in that ball game, gave up just one run. That pitches outside of Mize, two balls, two strikes. Hess got a ground ball off the bat of Drew Mize on just one pitch. And now trying to take care of the other Mize brother. Carter, 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. A foul tip hung on to by Braden Spar. Two up, two down for Hess. And that brings in the designated hitter, Will Menendez. Hess so far in the summer coming in to play. Made a couple of appearances. Five innings work, three earned runs. A couple of strikeouts, four hits in those five innings. Two innings against these Corn Belters last Monday and then three innings against the Cavemen last Wednesday. There's a breaking ball in there for strike two to Will Menendez. So Hess has retired both the Mize brothers and now has to deal with Menendez with two away. He has him in an 0-2 count. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. A quick second inning for Matthew Hess in relief of Josh Sieglitz. And we head to the bottom of the second. Jim's coming to bat. one nothing. Corn Belt, there's a 1-2-3 inning for the big right-hander. I want to take this time to thank Code Ninjas O'Fallon for sponsoring us all summer long. Code Ninjas is located on the Deerberg Shopping Center, Deer Creek Crossing, 2955 Highway K in O'Fallon. That's where you can find them, intersection of highways K and N. Kids ages 7 to 14 will learn how to code by building small video games with the help of their wonderful Sensei instructors. They'll start at White Belt and go all the way to Black Belt. Come in today for a free 30-minute session. Try it out and head to CodeNinjas.com slash MO dash O'Fallon or call 636-851-9634 to get started. That's CodeNinjas.com slash M-O dash O'Fallon or 636-851-9634 to get started. Code Ninjas O'Fallon, kids have fun. Parents see results. We head to the bottom of the second. one nothing Corn Belters, RBI base set for Nate Green in the top half of the first. And that's the only scoring so far in this ball game. As Nathan Beaton works into his second inning, worked a scoreless first. Worked around a two-out walk and struck out Kylan Cunningham to end the inning. A couple of strikeouts so far for Beaton in an inning of work. Making his third appearance here in the Car Shield Collegiate League. He'll face Braden Spar to lead things off. And Spar greets him with a base hit to left field on the first pitch. Inside jammer, good job by Spar getting just enough of the barrel on it just to lift it past the shortstop in Mize. So a leadoff single for Braden Spire. We can get our first glimpse of a new player here in the Carshield Collegiate League, Lorenzo Debrecht out of the University of Toledo. 
Primarily a shortstop at Toledo. Made 15 starts there this spring. Plays the outfield as well. He's in center field this afternoon. CBC High School, 6'2", 195 pounds. Hit 230 at Toledo this spring in 16 starts. Started all 16 games. 15 of them at shortstop playing center field here this afternoon. A swing and a miss for strike two. And obviously because of this shortened season due to COVID-19, those numbers don't really, you know, show how good of a player DeBrett can be. He slashed 307, 416, 395 in JUCO his sophomore year, so he can hit. Check swing, and he held up in the dirt. Good plate discipline there. Oh, no, they say he went around. Wow. So strike three. Thought for sure DeBrecht held up on that pitch, but it's strike three. Wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> That's very surprising. <laughs> you can hear Justin Paulson, wow. third base coach and head coach for the Gems, talking to field umpire Justin Robinson about that. I mean, he even showed about just put his hands out side to side and was like, there's no way he offered it that. I don't think either of us thought he went around, and that's a foul ball, and Green catches it, I think, on the inside of the leg. Ouch. Mike Berger will head out to check on his catcher, and we'll step aside for a moment while Green gathers his bearings, and we'll give you an update right after this. one nothing Corn Belt there's here in the second.
Well, Nate Green has gathered himself, and I think we're ready to start playing again as Nate Green squats back behind the plate. <laughs> and he's going to get tested right away, and Spar swipes second base, and he's going to stay there. Stolen base for Braden Spar. I think that's that's kind of insulting. <laughs> hey, it's baseball. <laughs> you get a runner in scoring position, you still got to think. It's a one to nothing ball game, right? You put that runner in scoring position, now you got an opportunity to score. Sorry that it happened, but you got to play the game. <laughs> a little gamesmanship there. One ball, one strike to Lane Barrymore, and a foul ball. I mean, seriously, if you're a coach in that position, what do you do? You just see a catcher come back in. He's obviously not 100%. I'm sending my runner from first base. I don't know about you, but that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm putting I, him not, in scoring not position. That not that it's a bad play. Just, you know, one ball, two strikes. A swing and a miss from Barrymore, so Beaton picks up his fourth strikeout. Again, that stolen base brought to you by the O'Fallon Family YMCA, the Y for Healthy Living, Youth Development, Social Responsibility. So Kyle Franklin now with the runner in scoring position, two away, Spar at second base after the stolen base. And he rips the first pitch foul down the third base line. Yeah, I think I, Kyle might have broken it. He did. He's going to get a new piece of lumber. I got a chance to chat with Kyle earlier in this game, a guy I got a chance to play with in the Metro League after our first seasons in, in college. And he's really comfortable now where he is. He's you know going to go back to Mid-American Nazarene, of course, a part of the Heart of America Athletic Conference in the NAIA over in Olathe, Kansas. And you know he's a guy that his career has kind of been up and down. He started at the JUCO level, then transferred to Hannibal LaGrange, found himself, and then went back to the JUCO level and now ends up back at the NAI level. So a whirlwind tour mm -hmm. for Kyle Franklin. But looks like he is comfortable now and really in a zone now for the Gems. It's crazy how things come come full circle when you get finally get settled in and find everything. Everything just starts to click. Oh, yeah, Swing and a miss there from Franklin. No balls, two strikes. So Beaton trying to strike out the side. He's already got four strikeouts. Through an inning in two thirds. The 0 2. Swing and a miss. He strikes out the side here in the second. A couple of scoreless innings for Nathan Beaton. Cam will tell you about the middle innings. We head to the third. 1 0 Corn Belters.
We move to the top of the third inning here at CarShield Field. Game number one of our triple header today on the CarShield Collegiate League Radio Network and CarShield Collegiate League TV. Matthew Hess working into his second inning of work. It'll be 9-1-2 due up in the Corn Belters order here in the top of the third. Braden Olin will re lead things off. Batting from the left side takes a first pitch fastball from Hess on the outside corner for strike number one. Here's the 0 1. Off speed pitch misses low to even up the count. One ball, one strike. It's a 1 to nothing lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. Here's a swing and lifted into left field. Coming on is Malzahn. Going out is a shortstop, and Bearmore will make the catch in shallow left field for the first out recorded here in the top of the third. And if the shortstop can get to that ball, that's his ball. He has a better angle instead of the third baseman kind of backpedaling, running straight back. The shortstop's got a better angle to that, can see it a little better and run more towards it. So that's a good job by Barrymore, recognizing he can get to the ball and calling off the third baseman, Franklin Malzahn. That was a long way for him to go, so nice job there by Barrymore. Rolls it back to the top of the order, and D.J. Schmidt, he's singled to lead off the ball game, later scored. Here's the first offering to him. Off-speed pitch misses low. Did he offer? Check down to first base umpire Justin Robinson. He said no. And now Justin Paulson from the Gems dugout is, is chomping at the field umpire Justin Robinson because one of his players last inning and Lorenzo Debrecht was called out on a similar play. Here's the 1-0. Fastball outside corner called strike. Evens up the count at one ball, one strike. One out here in the top of the third. The left-handed D.J. Schmidt at the dish, facing the righty Matthew Hess in his second inning of work. Here's the 1-1. Swung on and lifted down the left field line, giving chase the third baseman Franklin over towards the brick wall down the line, but it's out of play into the grass. Foul. Tate Matheny, the center fielder today for the Corn Belters, awaits on deck. One ball, two strikes on the count to Schmidt. Here's a swing and a drive right back at Wargo, the second baseman, and it goes past him underneath his glove into right field for a base hit. So a one-out single for DG, DJ Schmidt. Brings in Tate Matheny, the center fielder. I love Schmidt at the top of this lineup. Perfect guy to have hitting in front of these two thumpers, Matheny and Berger. Schmidt, one heck of a ball player. Matheny was hit by a pitch. Left on the bags back in the first. Here's the first offering to him. Swung on and fouled down the right field line, but it gets out of play onto the Country Financial Party patio down the right field line. So one strike on the count to Tate Matheny with a runner on first base and one out. Matthew Hess sets in the pitch. Right back up the box of the shortstop. He'll field it himself, steps on the bag at second for one, onto first for an inning-ending double play. So no runs on one hit, no errors in the field. Nobody left on base. The Corn Belters lead the Gems one to nothing as we move to the bottom of the third inning. This is CarShield Collegiate League Baseball on the CarShield Collegiate League Radio Network and CarShield Collegiate League TV.
Bottom of the third inning here at Carshield Field as the Gems come to the plate. And Nathan Beaton into his third inning of work. He has worked through the Gems lineup pretty well today. Has only given up one hit in two innings of work. He faces 9-1-2 in the Gems order. Nick Wilkie will lead things off the starting first baseman. First offering to him, fastball right down mainstream, strike one. So it's a one to nothing lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. They got on the board back in the first inning when Nate Green drove in DJ Smith. 0-1 oh, pitch upstairs, almost offered did Wilkie, but he was able to hold back to even the count. One ball, one strike. Tommy Woods awaits on deck. He's 0 for 1 today. Beaton sets, takes a breather, and the pitch. Fastball outside corner missed. Nate, Dream, Nate Green tried to stick it on that outer third, but home plate umpire Trevor Daniger was not fooled. Here comes the 2-1 from Nathan Beaton. Fastball inside corner missed. So count runs to three balls and one strike. Beautiful day here at Carshield Field. 75 degrees and the sun is beaming onto the turf field here. Here's the 3-1. Swung on and fouled right back towards the screen to make the count full. Three balls and two strikes. Hess, or Beaton rather, gets a sign from Green. Here's the pitch. Another foul ball right back at the screen, so we'll do it again. Nick Wilkie, not the typical nine-hole spot hitter that you would think of. Usually is that nine-hole spot is utilized to roll the order back up to the top, but he's a guy that's got some power. Here comes the seventh pitch of the at-bat. Here's the kick from Beaton. Swing and another line drive down the left field line, but it's out of play and foul. Is that kind of thing too? Wilkie well, doing a lot to stay alive. Wilkie kind of been struggling to find his form so far this summer, but he hit a home run back on Monday, just sneaked over the left field wall. I was talking to him after the game. He said he was – that ball was in the air. He's like, please go out, please go out, and it just, just cleared the wall. So hopefully that home run gets him going. Here's a 3-2. Curveball swung on, tapped to Jake Berger at third base. He'll field it cleanly. Strong throw across the diamond to first in time for out number one. Love to see it. Jake Berger air it out over there at third mm -hmm. base. He's got that's, a cannon. That's fun to watch. And he lets it rip. Let's throw an absolute strike over to first base. And he knew he had plenty of time with, with Wilkie running. Just take a nice couple shuffles and just fire on to first. Nice strike there from Berger. So that brings it back to the top of the order for the Gems. It's Tommy Woods. Here with one out in the bottom of the third. First offering to Tommy. Missed outside. Ball one. That's Tommy's 0 for 1 today. Struck out back in the first. Looking on a curveball inside corner from Beaton. Here's the 1-0. Fastball outside corner. Nate Green stuck it, but it was too far outside. Two balls and no strikes. To the righty, Tommy Woods. He's in the designated hitter spot today for the Gems. Has been starting at third base this week, but gets a day off from the field. Here's a 2-0. Fastball gets in there, strike one. Tate Wargo waits on deck, and if the Gems can push it there, Ryan Malzahn will be the fourth guy due up this inning. Here's a 2-1 to Tommy. Took it for a strike on the outer third. So that's back-to-back -back fastballs on the outside corner that Tommy takes for a strike. You wonder where he's sitting, what he's looking for. Wonder what Beaton will go to now. As he steps off the rubber to reacclimate himself. And delivers a 2-2. Fastball swung on a miss, and Tommy sat down on strikes for the second time today. That's just confidence from Beaton. And his fastball, trusting in his stuff, knowing he can come in the zone with two strikes and get a swing and a miss. He's that good strikeout stuff here today. Brings in Tate Wargo, starting second baseman today for the Gems. Already seen him flash some pretty good leather over at second. He's 0 for 1 today, grounded out to the right side of the infield in the first. Here's the first pitch to him. Swing and a foul over the concourse down the right field line out of play. 
Interesting to see how Nathan Beaton is working on the mound. Not a quick guy that gets right back on the mound after every pitch. He takes his time, but he looks comfortable and is in stride. Here's the 0-1. Fastball got outside the outer part of the zone, missed for ball one. Each guy has their own rhythm. Some guys are more methodical. Some guys like to get the ball and just get right back on the rubber. Beaton has his. He knows his rhythm. He knows his mechanics and knows what works for him. The 1-1. Fastball caught the outside corner, strike two. And the Gems hitters this inning look like they're just a little bit too patient. Mm -hmm. Beaton's painting that outside corner, and the Gems just aren't biting on it. Here's the one-two. Curveball driven in the right field. Will it get down? It does. No, they say it was caught on the run by the right fielder, Olin. So that's how the bottom of the third will end. No runs, no hits, no errors for the Corn Belters in the field. We move to the top of the fourth inning. It's still a one to nothing lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. You're listening to Carshield Collegiate League Baseball on the Carshield Collegiate League Radio Network and Carshield Collegiate League TV. Meet of the order due up for the Corn Belters here in the top of the fourth inning. It'll go Jake Berger, Nate Green, and Brett Pearson due up third in this inning. Berger 0 for 1 today as Matthew Hess works into his third inning of work. Works from the stretch. Here's the first offering to Berger, and it hit him. Got him on the Evo Shield guard on the left elbow, so he will take a hit by pitch to start off the top of the fourth. That's been the efficient outing for Hess so far. 18 pitches through two innings. He's gotten a lot of ground balls, double play ball, and just been working the ball down in the zone, been effective, but going to have to work around a leadoff base runner here. Has only rendered one hit today, but it was to the top of the order. Leadoff hitter DJ Schmidt, who notched a single back in the third. Brings in Nate Green, the catcher. First offering to him. Swung on and fouled down the right field line. Out of play. How about the approach from Green? He picked up a base hit. On the first pitch of his first at bat, picked up an RBI, seeing the ball well, sees another fastball and lets it rip. I like that. Seeing the fastball first pitch, let it eat. Green's driven in the only run today for the Corn Belters. Can he add to his perfect day at the plate? Here's the 0 1. Off speed pitch, lost the grip on it, did Hess, and it got away from him upstairs for a ball. So one ball and one strike on the count. A runner at first base, top of the fourth inning, a one to nothing lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. Brett Pearson awaits on deck. It'll be a lefty on righty matchup after Nate Green. The 1 1. Missed upstairs at the eyes to Green, took it for ball two. Left fielder Malzahn playing deep, a couple of steps from the track in left. Center fielder Debrecht. Straight away, and Kylan Cunningham in right, about four or five steps in front of that big green monster in right field. Infield playing big right now at the lip of the grass are the second baseman in Wargo and the shortstop in Bearmore. Covering it first is Wilkie. Here's the pitch, big swing and a hack from Nate Green for strike two. So two balls and two strikes on the count. 
Matthew Hess would love a ground ball here. Here's a 2-2. This is a curve ball, tapped on the right side, fielded cleanly by Wilkie. He'll go to second for one, scooped on a short hop by the shortstop Bearmore on to first, not in time. So an out will be recorded at second. They get the lead runner, but not the one at first. Heck of a play by Bearmore to just keep the ball in front of him, mm -hmm. played it on the short hop, was able to get the lead runner at second. And on that play, that ball hits so slowly, you're probably not going to turn two on that the way Nate Green runs, so just make sure you get an out. So Nate Green reaches on a fielder's choice, brings in Brett Pearson. First offering to him misses up and away for ball one. You're almost treating that as if you're a first baseman. Just make sure you catch the ball first. Don't worry. Catch the ball first, then try to get the runner next. One and all on the count. One runner on at first base and Nate Green. Here's the pitch. Big swing and a hack on an off-speed pitch that missed low in the zone, but Pearson offered anyway. One's across the board. One ball, one strike, one out, and a one to nothing lead for the Corn Belters. Here's the pitch driven into center field, coming on to Brecht, but he'll let it drop in front for a base hit. The throw to second, not in time, as Nate Green will get there easily. It's a single for Brett Pearson, and two runners are on with one out. The shortstop, Drew Mize, coming to the dish. Kind of an in-between that play there for DeBrecht. He's primarily in infield, does play outfield as well, but on that, on a ball hit right at you, in this, in this type of situation, this point in the game, don't mind you playing that ball in the hop, keeping the ball in front of you. Don't want to misplay it and have it go all the way. If he misses that ball, it goes all the way to the wall, and who knows what will happen. Keeps it a one-run game. And steps Drew Mize. First pitch to him. Up and inside for ball one. His brother Carter awaits on deck. Mize today 0 for 1. Grounded out to the shortstop back in the second. This was the first batter that Matthew Hess faced when he came in in the second inning. It's a 1-0. Another fastball misses inside for ball two. So Drew Mize showing some good discipline here early in this at bat. I'm sure he has the green light 2-0 if he can find a pitch that's in the zone that he can drive somewhere with level ball in the gaps with the Corn Belters. They lead one to nothing. Here's the pitch. Another fastball misses inside. That's three straight fastballs that Matthew Hess is kind of losing his release point. Three and zero on the count to the shortstop, Drew Mize. The pitch. Fastball right down the middle for strike one. Still an opportunity for a double play ball for the gems in the field. Here's the pitch. Big swing and a hack from Drew Mize. Just got a piece of it, but Spar was able to hold on for strike two. So three balls and two strikes. Full count to Drew Mize. A runner on first and a runner on second. One out in the top of the fourth. Here's the pitch. Fastball misses outside, and Drew Mize walk, works a walk. Drew Mize got off his swing on three and one. He knew he was going to get a fastball somewhere near the zone. Made a good swing at it. He still had one more pitch to go, and he knew if it's not anywhere close on three and two, no need to chase a pitch outside the zone. You got to make him come in the zone three and two, and works himself a nice walk. So it's bases loaded. Here in the top of the fourth, the left-handed first baseman Carter Mize digs in. 0 for 1 today. Struck out back in the second. First offering to him. Misses upstairs and away. Ball one. DeBrecht is now shaded a little bit towards his left. He's about four steps to the right of the second base bag. Here's the pitch. Misses outside for a ball and... Now Justin Paulson jumps out of the dugout, wants to have a talk with Matthew Hess and Braden Spar. It seems like Hess, the sending those fastballs are sailing up and away. You wonder if his elbows maybe dropping a little bit. He's not getting into his into his mechanics, not getting into the pitch enough, not driving down through the catcher's glove. You want to drive through the catcher's glove. Doesn't look like he's doing that. Kind of looks like. His elbow's maybe dropping. The ball's just sailing on him right now. Everything's missing high arm side. That's an indication of your arm dragging a little bit. 
opening up a little bit too much and just needs to find it here. He's, he still hasn't given up a run this inning. He still can do a little damage control. If he gets himself a ground ball, he's out of this inning. So conversation on the hill is done. And now we'll have another stoppage in play as the managers from both ball clubs want to have a conversation with the home plate umpire. I believe they want a pinch runner here for Nate Green, who suffered an injury earlier this game. So they will allow Jake Berger, who was earlier in this inning hit by a pitch. So what they're, what they're doing here is they're going back. So he was the final out recorded, yes. which is why he's going to be at third base. Yeah. So two out of the count to Carter Mize. Pitch misses outside for a ball. Here's a 3-0. Misses low, and they have walked in a run. The Corn Belters now lead 2 to nothing here in the top of the fourth inning. So it's now a two to nothing lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems here in the top of the fourth. Brings in Will Menendez. He's 0 for 1 today. Strike out back in the second. Here's the pitch. Off speed pitch gets in there, bottom part of the zone for strike one. So Hess not afraid to work backwards to these hitters as he's still trying to find his way here in the fourth. Base is loaded. One out. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside corner called strike number two. And now Menendez is behind in the count. No balls and two strikes. Hess sets on the hill. Here's the pitch. Swung on and tapped foul into the dugout of the Corn Belters. So we'll do this again. No balls, two strikes, and one out. Base is juiced. Here's the pitch. Missed outside. Great block to keep it in front by Braden Spar. Saves a run from scoring. So one ball and two strikes on the count. One out. Corn Belter's looking to add to what already is a 2 to nothing lead. Here's the pitch. Swing and a long drive to deep left center field. Could it be Menendez Grand Salami here in the top of the fourth inning? Corn Belters lead six to nothing. How about it, Will Menendez? Take a two strike pitch to left center, why don't you? How about that? Will Menendez, who has had a tough week this week, only notched one hit in the couple of games that the Corn Belters have played. But boy, did he get a hold of that one and drove it deep to left center field, about 365 over the wall. So it's six to nothing. Brings in Brandon Alenian. He's 0 for 1 today. Popped up to the first baseman. Here's the pitch. Curveball misses outside for a ball. One ball, one strike, and one out on the count. Here's the pitch. Misses outside for ball two. They're actually, strike two. So one <laughs> ball and two strikes now. And one out, a six to nothing lead for the Corn Belters after the grand slam by Will Menendez. Here's the pitch. Swing and fouled right back off the plate. Looked like it bounced off the hitter mm -hmm. in Olean. Here's a one two, swing and a tapper right side, but foul.
One out, and Matthew Hess now working from the windup. Here's the one, two. Swing a line drive into left field, going on Malzahn, but it'll drop and get out of play for a ground rule double. That one hung up there for a while, dropped right in front of Malzahn, who was racing over towards the foul line to make the catch, and then, of course, takes the long hop off of the turf and into the grass seating down the left field line. So that rolls it back to the top of the order in DJ Schmidt, who's two for two today. DJ with two singles already. Here's the first offering to him. Fastball outside corner missed from Hess for ball one. So Leon on with the double at second. And now Schmidt trying to drive him in. Taps this one over to the right side, fielded cleanly by the first baseman. He'll take it himself for out number two. Brings in Tate Matheny. He's 0 for 1 today. Grounded out back to short in the third and was hit by a pitch but left on the bags in the first. So a runner on third base. And a six to nothing lead for the Corn Belters. Two outs. Curveball from Matthew Hess gets in there, outer part of the zone for strike one to Tate Matheny's dismay. He thought that one was outside. Matheny trying to drive in one more here in the fourth as the Corn Belters already lead six to nothing. Here's the 0-1. Fastball swung on and missed by Matheny for strike two. Three-hole hitter Jake Berger awaits on deck if Tate Matheny can push it there. Two outs, and Matthew Hess is ahead in the count 0-2. Here's the pitch. Swinging a tapper to Kyle Franklin at third. Tries to field it on a short hop, but it goes out of his glove, and Tate Matheny is going to reach on the air. And Matheny, after he went down the first baseline, looks like he is walking a little gingerly now. But the Corn Belters score a run on the batted ball, so it's now seven to nothing here in the fourth inning. So we'll see a mound visit from Justin Paulson. He'll take the ball away from Matthew Hess. We'll see a new hurler on the hill in just a bit. Top of the fourth, it's a seven to nothing lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. We're back in a moment. It's Carshield Collegiate League Baseball on the Carshield Collegiate League Radio Network and Carshield Collegiate League TV.
So we're back here at Car Shield Field in the top of the fourth inning. Pitching change for the Gems. It'll be Alex Williams to take over for Matthew Hess as the Corn Belters have now batted around this inning. Jake Berger led off the inning with a hit by pitch and now comes to the dish for the second time here in the fourth. Corn Belters have scored six runs in this inning, four coming off the bat of Will Menendez's grand slam, and Tate Matheny just scored, or not rather, Tate Matheny was on first base. He is pinch run for by Spencer Nivens after Matheny was running down the first base line and after he went past first, came up a little ginger. So he's now on the bench, but Matheny batted in a run on the error from the third baseman. So that brings us to a 7 0 lead. Alex Williams on the hill, behind in the count, 1 0 to Jake Berger, a runner on first. Here's the pitch. Misses upstairs and inside for a ball. Alex Williams, another Harristow Hornet here in the Carshield Collegiate League. As he sets for the 2-0, here's the pitch. Inside, missed for a ball. It's all fun and games when you're on the same side. But right now, Williams is probably not too happy with his Harristow teammate, Will Menendez, for belting that grand slam earlier this inning. Runner on first, 3-0 pitch to Jake Berger. In there, strike one. Berger recorded his first big fly of the season earlier this week. It was a fly ball over the left field wall. Can he do it again? Here's a 3-1. Runner takes off for second. Pitch misses low, and Jake Berger's going to be on with a walk. So second time this inning that Jake Berger has reached base, and neither have been on a batted ball. Earlier this inning, got on with that hit by pitch, now a base on balls. And a pinch hitter here for Nate Green. We will, we will see Hayden Junger. Rather, Josh Cook. Catcher who started earlier this week. Here's a pitch. It swung on and missed for strike one. So a runner on first, runner on second. An 0-1 pitch to the pinch hitter on the way. Misses upstairs to Cook for ball two. For ball one, rather. One ball, one strike. Two outs on the board, two runners on the pond. Here's the pitch. 1-1, one, one, outside corner, called strike two. Seven to nothing lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems here in the top of the fourth. They've already batted around once today in this inning. Here's the one-two. Thought about offering to Cook, but wisely lays off as the off-speed pitch runs outside the zone to even up the count at two balls and two strikes. Brett Pearson awaits on deck. He singled and scored earlier this inning. Williams sets on the hill, and the two-two. Cook lines this one down the left field line, but it's out of play and foul into the grass down the left field line. Good thing for the gems is that an out can be recorded in any bag if a ball is put in play. Here's the 2-2 again. Swing and a miss on the high cheese, and Josh Cook is sat down on strikes. But a big inning for the Corn Belters here in the top of the fourth. A grand slam off the bat of Will Menendez, and then another one comes across the plates. It's a 7 0 lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems as we move to the bottom of the fourth inning. It's Carshield Collegiate League Baseball on the Carshield Collegiate League Radio Network and Carshield Collegiate League TV.
We move to the bottom of the fourth inning. A 7-0 lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. And boy, do the Gems have some work to do. Before the fourth, they just trailed by a score of low comparison compared to where this ball game is now. It's 7 to nothing as Ryan Malzahn, Kylan Cunningham, and Braden Sparr do up in the sitting for the Gems. First pitch fastball right down the middle for strike one to Ryan Malzahn. Malzahn has walked today and is only at bat. Nathan Beaton has looked really good through three innings so far. Here's the 0-1. Curveball inside corner missed for ball one. A little action in the Corn Belters bullpen. Lefty warming up down the left field line for the Corn Belters. So we'll see how long Nathan Beaton gets it. Right now he's moving and grooving. Misses outside, does the 1-1 pitch for ball two. 2-1 two and one on the count. Kylan Cunningham awaits on deck for the Gems. Here's a 2-1. Fastball inside corner called strike number two to even up the count at two balls and two strikes. Here comes a 2-2. Two -two. Fastball's driven in the right center field. Going on Matheny, but this one will get down in the gap in one hop over the fence in right center for a ground rule double for Ryan Malzahn. Man, how well is this guy swinging the bat right now? Seems like every time he hits a ball, it's hit hard somewhere. Great opposite field stroke there, just taking it the other way and picking himself a nice leadoff double. RBI opportunity for Kylan Cunningham, the starting right fielder today for the Gems. He struck out swinging to end the first. Here's the first pitch to him. Big swing and a hack. Foul back at the screen for strike one. Kylan Cunningham, a St. Charles Community College Cougar to be, upcoming this fall. So he'll play his days in the spring just down the road. Here's the 0-1. Misses low and inside. To even up at one ball and one strike. Matheny straight away in center. Right fielder in Olean is just a couple of steps in front of the big monster. He's just swinging a hack back towards the screen, making one ball and two strikes. Ryan Malzahn at second. A one ball, two strike count to the left handed right fielder, Kylan Cunningham. Here's a set and the pitch from Hess. Right back up the box. Base hit for Kylan Cunningham. Malzahn rounding third. He's going to score. And an RBI single for Kylan Cunningham to start off the bottom of the fourth. And the gems are on the board, 7-1. to one. The Corn Belters lead by six. That's all you got to do when you're trying to scratch and call your way back. Just get a nice at-bat. Just drive it right back up the middle. You don't need a home run right now. You're down 7-0. Pick yourself up a nice base hit and... Kylan Cunningham can hit the ball hard, and he does right, takes it right back up the middle. Nice approach there from the right fielder. So a one runner on base. As Braden Sparr digs in, the catcher takes the first pitch outside for ball one. Kylan Cunningham at first base grabs his lead. Beaten sets in the pitch. All-speed pitch missed outside. In the dirt, Cunningham thought about taking off, but he wisely just stays at first. Is that's a smart decision? Check back to Kylan Cunningham over at first base. He's there safely. Two O gets in there for strike number one. And of course, forgot to mention this change, but center fielder now for the Corn Belters is not Tate Matheny. This one's fouled out towards the screen and out of play. New center fielder now for the Corn Belters 
is Brett Pearson. He moves from second to center. Spencer Nivens is at second now as he was the pinch runner for Matheny in the last inning. Matheny walked off the field a little gingerly after running down to first base. Two balls and two strikes to count. Here's the pitch, hit him in the back, did the curveball, and Brandon Brayton Spar is on base with a hit by pitch. How about this answer from the Gems? They get the leadoff double by Miles on, a base hit by Cunningham, and now a hit by pitch, three straight base runners, and all of a sudden they're working themselves right back into this ball game. Scratch and claw your way back one run at a time. Can't hit a six-run homer. Just get base runners, keep the line moving. That's exactly what they're doing. Here comes Mike Berger. He wants to have a chat on the mound with Beaton and the entire infield. So we did see some action warming in the Corn Belters bullpen, but it looks like Mike Berger will let Beaton have this one with such a big lead. Corn Belters lead 7-1 to one here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Brings up Lorenzo Debrecht, the six-hole hitter and center fielder today for the Gems. Of course, first day on the squad for Lorenzo Debrecht out of University of Toledo, seeing his first summer action. 0 for 1 today. Here's the pitch. Runners take off for third. Snap throw to first is faked, and runners will be at the corners as Kylan Cunningham takes a bag on the catcher's indifference. So no balls and one strike on the count to the right-handed Lorenzo Debrecht. Runner on first base and Braden Spar is toying with pitcher Nathan Beaton about trying to take the second base bag. Here's a pitch. Fastball inside, sawed off by Debrecht out of play. So no balls and two strikes now on the count to center fielder Lorenzo Debrecht. Runners at the corners now as the Gems have scored one run in this inning, trying to claw their way back after the Corn Belters added five runs in the top of the inning. Here's a line drive right at the out, right at the into left field for a base hit. Kylan Cunningham will score rounding second, handing the third. It's going to be Braden Spar and Lorenzo Debrecht. Welcome to the Car Shield Collegiate League. You've got your first base hit, big fella. How about a nice solid base hit? Just through the left side of the infield with the infield and double play depth. That was hit just about routine shortstop with, with Drew Mize playing up the middle. Really didn't have much of a shot to get to that one with how hard it was hit. And Debrecht, just a nice little base hit. Base hit and an RBI. Brings in Lane Bearmore. The shortstop takes a first pitch strike from Beaton for strike one. A great two-strike approach as well. Not trying to do too much. Not trying to launch the ball in the air. Just hit a nice hard ground ball and pick up a base hit. Runners at the corners, no outs. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside corner. Strike number two to Bearmore. So don't think the gems are down in the count right now. Lorenzo Debrecht did just hit a two-strike single. Here's the pitch. Debrecht takes off for second. Curveball goes behind the back of the hitter, and here comes the runner from third heading home, sliding and scoring for run number three on the day for the gems. They now trail seven to three, and now this ball game seems like it's within reach for the gems. And still nobody out this inning. They still got a lot of chances left. They need to get to beaten while he's down and take advantage of this inning. Here's the pitch to Bearmore. The one-two is grounded down the left field line and foul out of play. So Debrecht now stands on second as the lone gem on the base pass as they have now scored three runs. It's seven to three. Corn Belters over the Gems. And Debrecht heads back to second. As the ball rolls onto the field, but behind the dish. So the one two is fouled away out of play. So still no outs here in the bottom of the fourth inning. One, two count to the gym's shortstop Lane Bearmore. Here's the pitch. Left the off-speed pitch low, goes behind the catcher, and DeBrecht is going to be able to take third on the pass ball.
So now Debrecht stands on third. Contact to the right side of the infield drives him in. Here's the 2-2. Upstairs, balls goes to the backstop as Cook couldn't hang on to it behind the plate for ball three. So Kyle Franklin awaits on deck for the Corn Belters, or for the Gems, rather. 7-3 to three lead right now. Gems trying to add one more. Here's a 3-2. Fastball outside corner, rung him up. Lane Bearmore not happy about that call as he walks back to the dugout. But he does get rung up there by the home plate umpire in Trevor Daniger. So we'll see a change. Oh, wow. He is tossed. Lane Bearmore chirping from the dugout from the home plate umpire, Trevor Daniger, on that last call. And now Justin Paulson's out from the third base coaching box to talk to the home plate umpire, Trevor Daniger. Again, socially distanced argument here between the two in the coach and the umpire. And this hasn't been a good day for the gyms and either one of the home plate umpire or the field umpire. They have been chirping at him all day with calls. And now Justin Paulson has to stick up for his team here in the fourth. We'll tell you about a pitching change right after this. It's a 7-3 to three lead for the Corn Belters over the gyms. We're back in a moment on the CarShield Collegiate League Radio Network and CarShield Collegiate League TV. Move to Kyle Franklin due up on the dish here in the bottom of the fourth inning as the Corn Belters lead the Gems 7-3. to three. Pitching change for the Corn Belters on the hill. You'll see Bobby Strant, Webster University lefty in. Here's the pitch to Kyle Franklin outside and misses for a ball. So Beaton's day is done. His final line is not yet ready as he's still responsible for the runner at third. Here's the pitch to Franklin. Misses outside, runs the count to three balls and no strikes. So Bobby Strant comes into the game and has yet to be able to throw a strike on the first three pitches. Here's the 
3-0 misses upstairs to Kyle Franklin and brings up the nine-hole hitter, Nick Wilkie, the first baseman. This has been a big fourth inning for both teams, Shane. I mean, mm -hmm. coming into this fourth inning, you think it's anybody's ball game, and then all of a sudden, top of the fourth inning, Cornbelter's going to tear. They're up 7 nothing, and now in the bottom of the fourth, doesn't look like the gyms are going to stop hunting <laughs> fastballs. <laughs> oh, that's crazy fourth inning. Usually save it for the seventh inning. Not wasting any time today. Getting right to it in the fourth. First pitch misses outside to the right-handed Nick Wilkie. He's 0 for 1 today. Grounded out to the third baseman back in the third inning. Runners at the corners, one out. Here's the pitch. Inside fastball gets in there for strike number one. So one ball, one strike on the count. Nine-hole hitter Nick Wilkie at the plate. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Misses low, blocked in the dirt by Cook, and a good job by him keeping it in front. Good job by Cook also staying focused right there because a lot of catchers, they make some mistakes in the inning. They continue to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. He's made a couple this inning, but shows that he can lock back in. Especially the runner on third base. Here's a 2-1. Missed low, did the off-speed pitch. Checked down the field umpire, Justin Robinson, to see if Wilkie offered, and he says no. Here comes the 3-1 to Wilkie. Swing and a miss. Got just a piece of it, but Cook's able to hang on behind the bag to run the count full. Three balls and two strikes. Runner Paulson will put the runner in Franklin in motion here on the 3-2 pitch. Here's the pitch. Left it low, did Wilkie, and he'll be on with a one-out walk. How about that? It was 7-0 coming into this inning, and now the potential tying run comes to the plate, and boy, would this be a time for Tommy Woods to break a string of a couple of strikeouts. So, DeBrecht is at third, reached on the single, and then advanced on a batted ball, now pass ball. Back-to-back -back walks brings in Tommy Woods. Big swing, big drive to left field, but this will stay in the ballpark, and Schmidt will be under it. Tag from Debrecht from third, heading home. Tommy Woods gets a sack fly, but records out number two. It does give the Corn Belters one more run. They now trail seven to four. Tommy got just mm -hmm. underneath that one yeah. because I thought he almost got all of it. That looked like a lot more off the bat potentially, but just barely missed the center of the barrel. Still gets himself an RBI, though. Good at bat there for Tommy. Brings in Tate Wargo. He's 0 for 2 today. Here's the first offering to him. Missed outside and away for ball one. Two outs on the board with runners at first and second. Gems have plated four runs in this inning. Here's the 1-0 from Strand. Fastball right down the middle for strike one. Swargo will step outside the box, readjust his helmet, readjust his batting gloves. If Wargo gets on, Ryan Malzahn will be at the dish for the second time in this inning. Here's the 1-1. Fastball outside corner called strike number two. Bottom of the fourth inning, Bobby Strant trying to shut the door on the threat. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss on a curveball in the dirt, and Tate Wargo sat down on strikes for the first time today, but not before the Gems played four runs in this sitting on three hits. No errors in the field. We move to the top of the fifth inning. It's a 7-4 to four lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems here at Carshield Field in O'Fallon, Missouri. We're back in a moment. It's Carshield Collegiate League Baseball on the Carshield Collegiate League Radio Network and Carshield Collegiate League TV.
Five, six, seven due up in the Corn Belters order as we move to the top of the fifth inning. Alex Williams into his second inning of work to seven to four lead for the Corn Belters over the gems. First offering to the lefty is in the dirt for ball one. Pearson all day already today, one for two, singled and scored back in the big inning that the Corn Belters had in the top of the fourth. Here's a 1-0. Off-speed pitch misses upstairs and away for ball number two. Williams working from the stretch. Takes a stutter step and sets. Here's the pitch. Swing and a line drive down the right field line, but foul out of play. And boy, was that a smoker if it was just a couple of feet inside the line. Couple of defensive changes. Colin Parrish goes out to right field. Kylan Cunningham moves over to center from right. And Lorenzo Debrecht moves from center field to shortstop after Lane Bearmore was tossed out of this ball game. Here's the 2-1. Off-speed pitch inside corner called strike number two to even it up at two balls and two strikes. So it's Malzahn in left, Cunningham in center, Parrish in right, around the horn, Wilkie at first. Wargo at second, DeBrecket short, Franklin at third, and Spar behind the plate. Here's the 2-2. Swing, and this one's lifted down the left field line. It'll get out of play and foul. Kyle Franklin, third baseman, was giving chase, but he didn't have a chance at that one. Continues to be a great day for baseball. A little bit of wind blowing here at Car Shield Field, but not too heavy, just enough to... Knock the sweat off of you. Here's the 2-2. Misses upstairs and inside for a ball. Here's the 3-2. Upstairs at the eyes and a leadoff walk for Brett Pearson near the top of the fifth. So the Corn Belters start this inning the same way they started the fourth. It was a hit by pitch that got Jake Berger on base to start the fourth, but nonetheless, you turn it to the fifth, and Brett Pearson gets on with the base on balls. Brings in Drew Mize, the shortstop. Bats from the right side. Here's the pitch. Swung on and lifted into right field. Foul territory, giving Chase the first baseman and Tate Wargo the second baseman, but it's into the seats and out of play. So Drew Mize will be followed by Carter Mize, his brother, who is playing first base today for the Corn Belters. Mize walked in the fourth, later scored on the Will Menendez Grand Slam, grounded out to second base back in the second inning. So he's 0 for 1 today. One strike on the count to the right-handed Drew Mize. Here's the pitch. Fastball low, but gets in there for a strike. Just caught the bottom part of the zone. 0-2 oh now the count to Mize. Williams looks over to the runner at first, now sets on the hill. Check back with a throw, but he's there with ease. Opportunity for a double play up ball up the middle as Wargo and DeBrecht are pinched. 0-2 oh, on the way. Missed low and away for ball one. Good waste pitch there from Williams. Now you would think Williams tries to attack the bottom part of the zone to get Mize to ground into a double play. We'll see if he can execute. Here's the 1-2. Taking off for second is the runner from first, but a foul ball back at the screen will make him return back to the bag that he previously occupied. Grabbing the lead at first is Pearson. 
Here's the one, two. Taking off again to second is Pearson. The pitch is flown into center field. Kylan Cunningham racing in. He'll make the catch on the run. The throw to first. He doubled him up. Pearson got sleeping off the bag, ran all the way to second, thought it was going to drop in front of Cunningham. But Kylan said, no, 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 buddy. I'm coming to grab it. And I'll also throw to first to double you off. So great job by Kylan Cunningham. Not the conventional double play, but either way, it still puts two outs on the board for the Gems here in the top of the fifth. And how about the deke at second there by Wargo? He's acting like he's turning a double play. He got Pearson to slide in the second base, had him all sorts of confused. Props to Wargo for selling that and getting the double play. Here's Carter Mize, the first baseman, with two outs, digs in from the left side. First pitch, fastball inside corner, called strike one. Here's the 0-1, the pitch. Low and away, low and inside rather, gets in there for strike two. So 0 and 2 the count now. Two outs here in the top of the fifth inning. Cornbelters had a runner on board, but that was erased with the Kylan Cunningham catch and throw back to first to double him off. Here's the 0-2. Big swing and a hack. High cheese from Alex Williams. Strikes out Carter Mize. Second swing strikeout of the day for Carter Mize. So no runs, no hits. No errors in the field by the Gems. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning. Gems trying to add on to what is a three-run deficit. We move to the bottom of the fifth inning here at Carshield Field. We're back in a moment on CCL-TV. Ryan Malzahn, Kylan Cunningham, and Braden Spar do up here in the bottom of the fifth inning for the Gems. Seven to four lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. First offering to Ryan Malzahn, outside corner called strike number one. Malzahn, last inning, led off the inning with a double, later scored on the RBI from Kylan Cunningham. Here's the pitch. Misses low inside for ball one. Malzahn. Drove that double last inning into right field. It one hopped the wall for a ground rule double. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Fastball outside corner called strike number two. Bobby Strant into his second inning of work after he relieved Nathan Beaton, who was cruising through three innings, but then started to get into some trouble in the fourth. So his teammate Bobby Strant had to relieve him. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside corner. Catcher was set up farther outside than the pitch actually was, and that was probably what caused the home plate umpire not to ring up Malzahn. Two balls and two strikes on the count. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on the curveball outside corner, and Ryan Malzahn sits down and strikes the first time of the, today. 
And you could tell Malzahn recognized breaking ball out of the hand. He was trying to just foul that pitch off, maybe drive it into right field, but he just swung right through. That's a good backdoor breaking ball there from Strant. Brings in Kylan Cunningham, who is now the center fielder for the Gems. Moved over from right. Last inning. He's one for two today. Singled and later scored. First pitch curveball in there, inside corner, strike number one to Kylan. Kylan also notched an RBI back in the fourth when he drove in Malzahn. Here's a pitch, swing and a miss on a curveball. Kylan was fooled. Kylan will readjust his helmet and gear up for what will be the 0-2 pitch to the lefty. It's a lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup. Righty awaits on deck and Braden Spar. Here's the pitch. Swing and stayed alive, did Cunningham, fouling this one back to the screen. Owen two on the count. One out to Kylan Cunningham. Here's the pitch. Swing and a line drive into left field. This one's going to carry up in the air, but it's going to be caught by the left fielder in Schmidt for the first out. Not a bad piece of hitting there from Cunningham. Ball just kind of kind of held up in the air just a little bit. And Good pitch there from Strant. And that's, of course, out number two as Malzahn struck out, and then Cunningham flies out to the left. Meeting on the mound now. Mike Berger wants to have a chat. He's going to bring a new arm on the hill. We'll tell you all about him right after this. 7-4 to four lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. Bottom five at Car Shield Field. Back in a moment. Brandon Bone into the ball game for the Corn Belters here in the fifth inning. Bottom of the fifth inning here as the Gems are the home team at the dish. It's Braden Spar due up to the plate with two outs. Spar's one for two today. Here's the pitch. Swung on, offered for strike one. And Spar's actually one for one today. Was hit by a pitch in the fourth, later scored a part of the big inning for the Gems. Here's the pitch, big swing and a hack on an outside pitch away and in the dirt for strike two. A little Braden Braden matchup right here. Name spelled differently, but see which Braden's going to get the better of this matchup here. Bone the righty out of SIUE is already ahead of Sparrow and two. Here's the pitch flown up and it'll get out of play. Foul behind home plate. Bone saw. Some good work this spring for SIUE. 21 games pitched for him as he delivers an off-speed pitch outside for a ball. Out of Effingham, Illinois. Six foot two, 170 for Spar, for Bone rather. 
Here's the one, two. Bounced in the dirt, blocked by Cook. Evens it up, two balls, two strikes. Here in the Car Shield Collegiate League for Brandon Bone. He is seeing his sixth appearance on the year. Eighth appearance on the year, rather. And it's pitched in 10 innings. Here's the 2-2, two -two, misses low and in the dirt. And <laughs> yeah, Counts right there, uh, yeah, Mr. Braden, Spar. <laughs> Braden thought he, he had ball four. I thought I was wrong, but... Brayton yep. was the one that was wrong, so he'll come <laughs> back to the dish for the 3-2 pitch. Oh. Now you know Bone really wants to get him here. Right. And Bone's done good work. You've seen it so far this year. Shane, ERA is right over two. Mm -hmm. He's been reliable. He's only given up three earned runs, so we'll see if he can keep the gyms at bay here. Here's the pitch. Curveball missed upstairs, and this time, you're right, son. You can go down <laughs> first. Let's make him throw one more pitch. That brings in Lorenzo DeBrack, the center fielder. Well, he started in center. Now is at shortstop. As Parrish took over in right, moved Kylan Cunningham over to center. First offering to him. Off-speed pitch outside, missed. There's a runner on first. A 7-4 lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems. Here's the 1-0. Swing and a long drive out to deep center field, going back the center fielder, and he'll make the catch on the run. What an absolute play out in center field to end the inning by Brett Pearson. Lorenzo DeBreck was trying to have a coming out party right there with that long drive, but Corn Belters are able to stop the halt here in the fifth inning. We move to the sixth. Shane will have the play-by-play -play for you. It's a 7-4 lead for the Corn Belters over the Gems on the Car Shield Collegiate League Radio Network and CCL-TV. To the top of the sixth, we go. I want to take this time to thank our proud sponsor, Interco Recycling. If you have large amounts of scrap metals, batteries, or electronics to recycle, give Interco a call, 1 877 258 3601. They'll handle it all for you, or head to itcscrap.com. Either way, you can find them. 1 258 3601 or itcscrap.com. Interco Recycling, a Metaltronics recycler since 1996. And now the owner of a grand slam and four runs driven in here this afternoon, Will Menendez digs in against Alex Williams. 
And the first pitch from Williams, a swing and a miss on a big breaking ball. Menendez one for two on the day with that grand slam. Menendez, Olean in the top of the order, DJ Schmidt. Alex Williams, an inning, an inning and a third so far of scoreless baseball. Another breaking ball is down low. One ball, one strike. Menendez and Williams' teammates at uh, Harris Stowe squaring off here. Williams, a two-way player at Harris Stowe, swings the bat as well. Menendez primarily plays third base, squaring off here in the Carcio Collegiate League. The 1-1. One -one. Called strike. C.J. Bilbury at Harris Stowe certainly enjoying this matchup, I'm sure. One ball, two strikes. The one, two from the big right-hander outside. Ten of the 11 runs in this ball game came in the fourth inning. Six put up by the Corn Belt. There's four for the Gems. It was one nothing going into that inning. And neither team has scored since. Two balls, two strikes. The big kick and the offering. Foul ball. That home run for Menendez was his first of the summer. And for the Corn Belt, there's their 23rd home run here in their 22nd game. Two balls, two strikes to Menendez after the foul ball. A big kick and the delivery from Williams. Fouled back once again. Good battle here between a couple of Harris Stowe Hornets brewing to lead off the sixth. 7-4, Corn Belters lead. And Menendez has driven in four of those runs on one swing of the twig. Seventh pitch of the at-bat coming here from Williams. Swinging another drive into left center. That's going to split the gap and get down in one hop off the wall. And extra bases once again for Will Menendez. Two for three on the afternoon with a grand slam and now a double. Almost the identical spot there where he hit the grand slam. And that actually was a double to the deepest part of the ballpark, right where the walls combined to go from left center to straightaway center. And if that ball's maybe two feet to the left, maybe six feet to the left, I would say it might be out of here. Mm -hmm. One hopped just in front of the warning track and hit off the wall. Well struck double there for Menendez to lead off the sixth. Now Brandon Olean. That pitch misses upstairs. One ball, no strikes. Olean was off to a nice start at Umsel this spring, hitting 300. Started off with a five-game hitting streak. Hitting in the nine hole. Today for the Corn Belters, he's one for two with a double, and he's going to do a job here, and he's going to move the runner over to third, a ground ball to second base for the first out. So he moves Menendez up to third, and... Good team at bat there for Olean to move the runner up to third. So now a fly ball to the outfield. A ground ball up the middle will get D.J. Schmidt an RBI. Schmidt's working on a two for three ball game. And as we talked about, you know, the, the later you get into these games, the more important these extra runs are. We've seen the Gems be able to battle through some at bats and play some runs this afternoon, so... They've got two more chances at the dish to the gems, so something to think about, about how important that run is for Menendez. And just think about the day for the Corn Belters. Menendez could account for five runs if that if he does score from third, and that's the bulk of their offense for today. Mm -hmm. From the eighth spot in the order, no less. Like Grand Slam came with two strikes on him as well. So a couple of two-strike extra base hits for Menendez. He's having himself a day serving as the designated hitter. He's been a solid defensive third baseman for the Corn Belters, but with Jake Berger manning third base, Menendez serving as a designated hitter and having a nice day for himself, two for three, a couple extra base hits. And now the Gems will bring the infield in with D.J. Schmidt at the dish. Two for three day for him so far with a couple of base hits. Hitting in front of what was Tate Matheny. Now Spencer Nivens, he's on deck. 
pinch ran for Matheny back in the fourth. The 1-0, Schmidt, a fly ball to center. Cunningham ranging to his right. He makes the catch. He's going to turn and fire to home plate. And the throw is not in time. Menendez scores on the sack fly for D.J. Schmidt. 8-4, Corn Belters. That's not a bad throw there from Cunningham. He got behind that baseball. Throw was just a little bit up the line and offline. But with the speedy runner in Menendez from third to home, it's going to be tough for Cunningham to – throw him out from straightaway center field. He really did just about everything he could, ranging into the gap, got around the baseball nicely. He's got a fantastic arm in the outfield and did just about everything he could. That's That was always going to be a tough throw. So an RBI for D.J. Schmidt. Give him seven on the summer. Spencer Nivens, first pitch swing, getting his first at bat. Here this afternoon after pinch running for Tate Matheny. Back in the fourth inning. Two away, nobody on, a sack fly for D.J. Schmidt. Extends the lead to 8-4. Six of the Corn Belters' eight runs came in that fourth inning. Swinging a foul ball at the plate. No balls, two strikes to Nivens. Nivens on the summer so far, hitting under 200, but getting on base almost 40% of the time. He's walked 13 times and struck out just eight. The 0-2 from Williams. Outside corner, ring him up, called third strike. And Nevins goes down for the final out. Sack fly for DJ Schmidt. Extends the Corn Belters lead to 8-4 as we head to the bottom of the sixth here on Car Shield Collegiate League TV. Corn Belters by four. To the bottom of the sixth we go. Gems trail at 8-4. Colin Parrish will get his first at bat. Parrish, Franklin, and Wilkie, bottom of the Gems order. Parrish came in in the fifth inning, replacing Lane Barrymore, who was tossed from this ball game. Parrish moved to right field. Colin Cunningham slid over to center. And Lorenzo DeBrack went from center field to shortstop. Parrish hitting in the seventh spot. Two balls, no strikes. Braden Bone got the final out of the fifth, back out there for the sixth. Parrish, after switching teams between the Falcons and the Gems a few days ago, a couple of multi-hit ball games, and he sprays that one foul. Quincy University outfielder. Red shirt his freshman season this spring. So still four years of eligibility left for Mr. Parrish. Playing for the QU Hawks of the Great Lakes Valley Conference, Division II. Three balls, one strike. Very clogged outfield up there in Quincy University. Another QU outfielder, Justin Eads, who's 
tearing it up here in the Car Shield Collegiate League. Part of that outfield, along with Nolan Snyder, the center fielder, Cole Evans and the like. Steady slew of outfielders heading through Quincy University. The 3-2 outside. So Parrish works a leadoff walk. And the Gems will look to cut into this deficit. They still got a couple more at-bats to do so. And Kyle Franklin will hit with the runner on base. So Parrish works a walk in his first plate appearance. And he reaches base. And that's hit into right field. Easy play there for Brandon Olean for out number one. Franklin retired on one pitch. For Colin Parrish, just his second walk. As a member of the Gens. So now Nick Wilkie, the ninth place setter and first baseman here this afternoon. Has one hit so far this summer, a home run on Monday against the Falcons. Bone checks on Parrish. So one away. Franklin now 0 for 2 after walking back in the fourth. Nick Wilkie reached on a walk in that inning as well. Parrish takes off for second. A nice throw down by Cook, but not in time. Parrish swipes second base. Strong throw down from Josh Cook, but a stolen base for Colin Parrish brought to you by the O'Fallon Family YMCA, the Y. For healthy living, youth development, and social responsibility. So Nick Wilkie now hitting with a runner in scoring position after Parrish, Parrish swipes the bag. Check swing and a called strike. No balls, two strikes to Wilkie. Formerly a Winsville Hold High School, Lewis and Clark Community College. The big right-handed swinging Nick Wilkie playing first base. The 0-2 from Bone. Swing a ground ball up the middle, and a sliding play by Drew Mize onto his brother Carter, and a nice play, Mize to Mize, for the second out. Parrish hesitated, thought about going to third, but at the last second decided to retreat back to second, probably the wise choice. Yeah, that plays right in front of the shortstop. If he's got to make an adjustment to get that to second, quickly can happen. So smart by the runner, Parrish. Keeps himself in scoring position because, of course, top of the lineup, Tommy Woods coming out. Mm -hmm. Tommy Woods delivered a sack flies last time up. So 0 for 2 with an RBI for him today. And Parrish hesitated for a second. Now he's going to take off for third to throw down, and he is out. So Parrish makes the final out at third base after the wild pitch. Or what would have been a wild pitch had Parrish advanced. But nonetheless, the inning is over, and we head to the seventh. 8-4 Corn Belters that look to add on in their final chance at the plate right after this.
Jake Berger gets things started here in the seventh for the Corn Belters. Three, four, and five. Berger, Cook, and Pearson for the Corn Belters as they look to add on. And they will face the lefty headed to Lindenwood University, Logan Caton, making his third appearance. He fires in a strike. No balls, one strike. Caton working very quickly. The 0-1. Pop fly into right field, and Parrish is drifting back near the wall, and he'll make the catch. That ball almost snuck out of here off the bat of Jake Berger. Yeah, glad that Parrish in right field stuck with it. Made that play look easy as he's got to track all the way back to the wall, get a feeling for where he is, and then work back in for that baseball. And yeah, That was, I don't know what else. Berger could have done to try to drive that one no. out of here. I mean, he got as much as he could of it and just got a little bit underneath it, so that's probably what, what kept it in the air that long and stayed in the ballpark. He caught it on, a on the barrel, but just a tad underneath it, like you said. And there's a ball down low, and you'll see Mr. Caton. He'll vary up his delivery. Sometimes he'll go a quick step and just go. Sometimes he'll pick the leg up, pause, and then go. Sometimes it's just a fluid motion like that. And Cook smacks that one to right center. Kylan Cunningham drifting into the gap, and he'll make the catch. So a couple of long flyouts for the Corn Belters here in the seventh. You know, we just talked about it off the air in between innings, and those fly balls on Monday or Tuesday probably get out of here. Mm -hmm. But today, because of the weather, it's not as humid here, not as hot, and, you know, the air just is – allowing the baseball to die when it gets into that power alley in right center. And we've seen the same thing happen in left center. Of course, Menendez was able to get a hold of one, mm -hmm. but that one was a no-doubter. Every other one that's been a 50-50 ball has stayed in the ballpark this mm -hmm. afternoon. You make a great point there. Not much breeze to speak of. It's a little bit cooler than it has been in weeks past. So the ball not flying quite as well out of Car Shield Field. And now the switch hitting... Brett Pearson steps in with two out, two away, and nobody on. Ball two inside, two balls, no strikes. Well, and of course, you know, with the conditions changing up, it keeps the game closer because those fly balls, we could be at a 12 to 4 ball game mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm. There's a good pitch there from Caton on the outside corner. Caton, a couple of shaky outings, looking for a scoreless seventh here. And the lefty steps off and will try his luck again. Brett Pearson, switch hitter, hitting from the right side against the left-handed Logan Caton. The kick and the 2-1. Swinging a foul ball. So Caton battles back to even it, two balls, two strikes. A couple of flyouts to begin the inning. And now Caton looking to retire Pearson for a 1-2-3-7. Trying to hold the Corn Belters lead at four. The 2-2 two -two upstairs. One with a quick delivery there. Pitching's all about disrupting the timing of a hitter any way you can do it. Three balls, two strikes to Pearson. The full count offering from Logan Caton. Another foul ball. We'll try it again. Six pitches so far in this at bat number seven coming. Rob Parks is ready down in the Corn Belters bullpen. A 3-2 from Caton. He walked him just a bit high. So a two-out base runner for the Corn Belters, and now the younger of the Mize brothers, Drew, steps in. Drew 0 for 2, reached on a walk and scored. Has also grounded out and hit into a fly ball double play. First pitch from Logan Caton and a foul ball. Last time Mize was at the plate, he hit a fly ball to center field. The runner Pearson was off with the pitch, and the second baseman, Tate Wargo, sold it at the second base bag, got Pearson to slide, and by the time Pearson realized what was happening, it was too late for him to get back to first base, and Colin Cunningham struck him down. So your untraditional 8-3 double play. 
And there's a called strike. No balls, two strikes to Drew Mize. Oh, for two days so far for Drew. His brother Carter on deck if he can extend the inning. The 0-2 from Caton. Swinging a foul ball down the right field line. Three gems converge, and it's the second baseman Wargo to put it away. Nice play. Tate Wargo down the right field line in foul territory. A score of the seventh. Nicely done by Logan Caton. We head to the bottom of the seventh. Final chance for the gems. They need four. They trail it eight to four. So one SIUE arm hands off to another. Braden Bone gives way to Rob Parks here in the bottom of the seventh. Not a safe situation with the Corn Belters leading by four, but Rob Parks trying to close things out. He'll face the top of the gym's order. Woods, Wargo, and Ryan Malzahn. Woods 0 for 2 on the day. He was at the plate when Colin Parrish was thrown out at third base to end the sixth inning. The first pitch from the left-hander Parks is up and away. Ball one, Parks. 27 strikeouts and nine walks and 16 and two thirds. So far this summer, an ERA at 1.68. He has been a stingy left arm out of the bullpen for the Corn Belters. Two balls, no strikes to Tommy. The 2-0 outside. Woods has not walked today, but one ball away from doing so to lead off the seventh. Parks needs to come in the zone here at the 3-0. Outside, he walked him on four pitches. This is the type of approach it's going to take for the Gems to come back in this one. It's a one-guy-at-a-time approach and just pass the baton one guy at a time and just try to get the carousel rolling. For Woods, now 23 walks in 20 ball games, and he is on first base. The next man in charge of keeping that line moving is Tate Wargo, the second baseman, who made a fine defensive play to end the last inning. And Parks, five straight balls to start the inning. That was just his 10th walk of the summer compared to 27 strikeouts that walk to Woods. And he fires in a strike there, one ball, one strike. It's probably... Great pitch on the outside corner there from the lefty attacking the outside. The 1-1 one, one from Parks. Hit foul down the first baseline. Carter Mize gives chase, but it falls foul and hops out of play. One ball, two strikes. So Parks bouncing back nicely after the free pass. Trying to work around a leadoff walk and get Wargo here. One ball, two strikes. Two strikes. 
And the lefty Parks comes set for the one-two pitch. That fastball gets away from him, two and two. Wargo 0 for 3 on the ball game. Ground out, a fly out, and a strikeout. The 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss. He goes down swinging. No drop third strike with the runner on first, but Woods can advance, and he does to second base with one out. Yeah, heads up play by Tommy taking the second bag. Got to put a runner in scoring position if you can. Wargo just swinging through an off-speed pitch that was in the dirt. And couldn't handle it, so still lots of chances in this order for the Gems to try to keep the line moving. And the three-hole hitter, Ryan Malzahn, steps in. One for two ball games so far. A walk, a double, a run scored, and a strikeout. And a good pitch there from Parks on the outside corner. 28 strikeouts now in 17 innings for Rob Parks. And Woods is going to take off for third base, and Malzahn fouls it away. Woods had it stolen. And if Malzahn's going to foul that away, if he knows it's going to be a fastball anyway, Woods had the bag, just let it go through. Berger wasn't even covering at third base, and where Woods was positionally, he was about three-fourths of the way to third already. I think I'd take Tommy Woods three-quarters three of the way to the bag <laughs> instead of Jake Berger coming from his position. I, I would too. I second that. No balls, two strikes to Malzahn. It was an 0-1 pitch, though, so I understand Malzahn trying to swing, but you don't want to fall behind 0-2, but if Woods has the base stolen, it's kind of a tricky situation there for Malzahn. The 0-2, he hits it to the right side. Easy play there for Spencer Nevins. Two away here in the seventh. And if you notice, the 0-2 swing and the 0-1 swing from Malzahn right there, they both were – kind of protection type swings. He didn't have identification, pitch location to really drive a baseball. Mm -hmm. He just looked like he was trying to put the ball in play and do a job. That kind of was the point with the analysis there. So now two away. Final chance for the Gems is the center fielder, Kylan Cunningham. And he hits that one in the left field. This should do it. DJ Schmidt under it. 8-4. Corn Belters win it. They keep their stranglehold on first place here in the Carsfield Collegiate League with an 8-4 victory over the Gems. They've moved to 12-8 and 2. Gems fall to 8-13 and 1. A grand slam for Will Menendez. The big blow, and they win it by a final score of 8-4. to four. we got two more ball games coming up this evening. Falcons Cavemen at 5-30. Eagle suits to follow. So we hope to see you then. That does it for now. We'll have a new stream for you starting at 5-30 Central Time here from Car Shield Field. We'll be back then. Hope to see you then, or if you can make it out to the ballpark, we'd love to see you as well. One dollar beer night here at the ballpark. So hopefully we'll see you here or see you right here on YouTube. For Cam and Charlie, I'm Shane Holsey. Have a great rest of your day. Hopefully we'll see you later here at the, ball, here at the ballpark or on YouTube. We'll see you then. Enjoy your rest of your day, everybody.